Hey, shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome back. Thank you again for joining me. Today, I want to talk about uh, the harlot herself and uh, the book of uh, Joshua, uh, Rahab. I want to talk about her and uh, uh, give you a little lowdown and a little story about her. Now, <clears throat> now the story is Joshua sent out some spies to spy out the land, you know, especially Jericho. And Rahab was a uh, she living with her family. She was, you know, scripture says she was a harlot, but, you know, some, some claim, you know, she was some kind of a inns keeper. Now, if she was a harlot, you know, you got to ask the question, was it sex, a uh, slave trade, sex slave trade, uh, going on in there? Or was it just so bad? That that's the only way she needed money. But anyways, besides that, I'm going to read, I'm going to read this for you. In Joshua chapter two, I'm gonna start with one. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to uh, verse uh, 24. And Joshua, son of Nun, sent out to Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, "Go view the land, even Jericho." They went and came into the harlot's house named Rahab, and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jer Jericho, saying, "Behold, there came men." And hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. So he was he was on to them. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence. They were, and it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the man went out. Whether the man went, I wrought not. Pursue after them quickly, for you shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the uh, stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan unto the fords. And as soon as they uh, which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, they came up, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that Yahweh has given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us. And that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard for, by how Yahweh dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. And what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side, Jordan, uh, Shion and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. So she heard about it and the inhabitants heard about it. So there's much to be feared. About these, about these uh, spies, you know, the Israelis, you know, the power they had and Yahweh was behind them. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did they, there remain any more courage in any man because of your, for, because of you, for Yahweh, your Elohim, he is Elohim in heaven above and in earth beneath. Now, therefore, I pray you swear unto me by Yahweh, since I have showed you kindness that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token, that you will save alive my father, my mother, and my brethren, and my sisters, and all that have all they have, and deliver our lives from death. And the man answered her, Our life for yours, if you utter not this our business, and it shall be when Yahweh hath given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Then she let them down by the cord through the window, for her house was upon the tower wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned, and afterwards may you go your way. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath which thou hast made. A swear. Behold, when we come into thy land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which 
thou didst let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father, thy mother, thy brethren, and thy father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house under the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. And if thou utter this our business, then we will be quit of thine oath, which thou hast made us to swear. And she said, According unto your words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed, and she bound a scarlet line in the window. And they went and came unto the mountain, and ab abode there three days until the pursuers were returned, and the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but found them not. So the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua, the son of Nun, and told him all the things that befell them. And they said unto Joshua, Truly Yahweh has delivered into our hands all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. So that was a good report. You know, the inhabitants were afraid, afraid of these Israelites and, you know, Yahweh. They were afraid of them. They knew the power they had. And uh, anyways, if we go, we're going to skip over to chapter 6 now. Go to chapter 6 and uh, 17 to 26. And we'll start out, yeah, verse 17. And the city shall be accursed, even it shall be all that are therein to Yahweh only. Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that was sent. And you be any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed, when you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse of in trouble. By all the silver and gold vessels of brass and iron are are consecrated unto Yahweh, they shall come into the treasury of Yahweh. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it passed, came to pass that when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and donkey with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house and bring them out. Thence the woman and all her all that she hath, as ye swore unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein, only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and the iron, they put in the treasury of the house of Yahweh. And Joshua saved Rahab and the heart of life in her father's household and all that she had, even she, and even, she even dwelt in Israel even to this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to the spy, to spy out Jericho. And Joshua adjured them at that time saying curse be any man before Yahweh that rises up this buildeth this city Jericho he shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn and his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it so so that was uh you know merc merciful you know as a token of thankful thankfulness you know the Joshua you know you know kept the the oath uh, that the spies said to Rahab and her, you know, her family, you know, and she lived with uh, the Israelites, you know, they said till this day, as far as, uh, you know, the, 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 the book was written. So now, now I want to go to uh, book of Hebrews, go to the New Testament book of Hebrews. And this is, now this is going to be interesting here. Book of Hebrews, they say, you know, some believe it was Paul was the author of it, you know, and a lot of indications, you know, say that. So I'm going to go to 11, verse 11, uh, or chapter 11, verse 31. Right here, it says, By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed 
not when she was had received the spies with peace. So the author here, Paul, saying it's by faith that, you know, Rahab did that. Now, we go to the book of James, chapter 2, chapter 2, and uh, verse 25. 25 here and this is what james james says likewise also was not rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way so you know he says by works while paul or the book of hebrews says by faith so if you put them two together it's a what i call a working faith <laughs> it's working faith but uh you know, I just, you know, wanted to, you know, mention, mention Rahab to you, you know, and, you know, her part in the scriptures and what happened and everything. And, uh, you know, uh, even though she had some shortcomings before they came, I, all indications is she stopped her profession when she went, you know, probably lived with, uh, the Israelite Israelites and, uh, and that's just, you know, something just, you know, study, you know, to study, you know, so yeah, just go to, Joshua, you know, the book of Joshua and uh, chapter two and then, you know, chapter six, go through there and read up on it. You know, it's very interesting. And uh, that's all I really want to say right now. So let me know what you think and give me a big thumbs up and hit that notification bell and also subscribe. I'll appreciate that. And you feel free to watch my other videos. That's all I have to say right now. I thank you again for joining me. I really do. I really appreciate this. Till we meet again. Peace out and shalom.